Susan Pascarelli is an artist who connects the East with the West, art history with nature, and the most ancient art forms with the newest technologies. Here's a series of self-portraits she did on her iPad, inspired by Aboriginal art and modern masters like Miro and Clay. For some of these, she starts them with her eyes closed. Their playful nature gives a sense of her artistic spirit. Perfect likeness. <laughs> As a child, I grew up in Southern California. I grew up next to the Mojave Desert, so I'm familiar with that arid landscape, and I've always loved it. I moved to New Mexico six years ago. While I miss Philadelphia with all my heart, I feel at home in New Mexico. I've acclimated, which was a little rough in the first few years because I wasn't used to so much space and isolation. I can see a hundred miles and there's a beautiful Taos mountain with the Pueblo. What I have to relate to is nature. Susan writes about a walk she takes every morning before she paints. I often walk at Pot Creek. Pot Creek is an ancient Anasazi site, now a pygmy forest of pinon pine and juniper trees near my house in Taos, New Mexico. Here, the vast open space of the Taos Plains begins to rise into the foothills of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. I love to walk in the early morning with the sweet fragrance of pinon and juniper. In my card, I wrote about this wonderful walk that I go on. This work really is uh, literally that walk. It's a meandering path. I've been using that in my paintings, and it's a loop trail that goes through Pinon and Juniper, and I go there every morning, and it's wonderful. It's so fresh, and 7,000 feet up, and you see huge weather systems go by. Love it, and the nature is my museum visit now. I used to go to museums all the time, and I miss that about Philadelphia very much. But nature replaces that. It's what I use now for my nourishment and my life. Susan told me that her small landscapes are done on location, but that the big abstractions are done in the studio. It seemed to me that it would require an awful lot of work to make such very complex images. These watercolors that you see here in this show are layers and layers of tints. And they end up in a, in a more opaque uh, area in each one of these little squares. Uh, it's funny, uh, many people think that my work is labor-intensive, and that's an expression that I've heard over the years. I don't feel that way at all. I'm very routine-oriented, so I get up in the morning, and after my walk, I'll come in and work for three or four hours, and when I'm working, I'm at my calmest, and I just enjoy the tactile quality of spreading the paint. These gradations take quite a bit of control with regard to the amount of pigment and water that I use. And sometimes there are greater jumps in that gradation and sometimes I can get it pretty smooth. Whatever the case is, I always have to pay very close attention to that amount of pigment with water. With watercolor, this idea of water and the west and the arid climate, and it's so valuable. On some level, I think that relates to my working process. I mean, I'm aware of that. I learned that Susan is balancing three intensely important ongoing relationships with guys. Actually, maybe I should say males rather than guys. Richard, he's an important person in my life and he's made this possible for me and it's been a while that I've been showing here 
And so I think he's probably number three. There's Charlie, my husband, and Arnie, my cat, and then Richard comes in there. So. Am I moving up on the list? <laughs> it's a good solid, good yes. solid place. Yes. Charlie is my husband of uh, over 40 years. I can't even remember anymore. Uh, but he has supported me. His, he has enabled me to do what I love to do in an abiding, the most abiding way. He's just the finest person I've ever met in my life. Wow. After 40 years, it's, that's, yeah. And, and how about true. the cat? Is he as nice as the cat? Yes, yes. <laughs> Arnie. And Arnie's in my paintings. He's everywhere in my paintings, particularly these ones on, on the wall here, the vertical paintings. Susan and Charlie are fans of an ancient art form that they see all over the Southwest. I'm very influenced by rock art, either petroglyphs, which are carved or pecked at uh, to get this incised line, and they make them on rock. There are also paintings that they use, and they're called pictographs. And they're a little more fragile, but there are still many around in the Southwest. I think that climate helps to preserve them, and they're quite powerful. I love the whimsical quality of it and the ancient quality of it. So that's in all of this work right here. It's my sort of translation of that. I have a great love for art history. I went to school and studied art history at Berkeley and then we moved to the East and I was fortunate enough to go to Brooklyn College to get my MFA. It was a great education. It gave me the opportunity to know the East and to know New York and to go to the galleries and go to the museums. And I'm glad for that. I feel very grateful, actually. I'm actually pretty grateful to get to meet her. With her great intellectual energy, creative spark, reverence for nature, and limitless curiosity, Susan embodies the spirit of art. An abstract watercolorist who draws landscapes on the side with her iPad, Susan has a pretty wonderful attitude about things. I love joy. I, I'm capable of joy and gratitude and awe. And the Western landscape does give me awe. Yeah, I want to get it all in there as much as I can in the best way possible and be open. Uh, and I'm grateful for my love. I'm grateful for my love to work. Um, I'm glad for that.